Let's talk about sinkers, why perhaps more pitchers in baseball should be throwing them and how it relates to three pitchers who all made their debut last season. And we will start with one of those rookies. His name is Brandon Fought, and he made his debut on May 3rd last season. And he got kind of crushed to the tune of an 8.37 ERA over five starts. The immediate issue appeared to be that his four-seam fastball just wasn't that great. Stuff Plus gave it a 97, so just under the average for a major league average four-seam fastball. And on 22 fastballs in play that month versus right-handed hitters, he allowed a 532 x Woba and an 808 slug, small sample, sure, but just really not that good. And we saw him in the majors again a month later for one outing, and it was rough once again. And it wasn't until July 22nd that he was back up for good. And upon his return, we saw a new pitch, a sinker. It wasn't amazing, Stuff Plus had it at a 97, but if you look at the three months of starts he made between August 1st and the World Series, he threw the pitch 16% to right-handed hitters. The ex-woba on the sinker was 329, which is better than the league average for sinkers. And the ex-woba on his four seam actually went from north of 500 to just below 400, slightly better. It didn't make the four seam elite by adding the sinker, but it definitely helped his mix. Fought sinker served two pretty clear purposes. The first being just that it gave him something hard moving in on a right-handed hitter's hands, given the fact that his four seam fastball and slider are both pitches that sit on the outer third of the plate and he didn't have too much confidence in his changeup, he was now pitching to different parts of the zone. And you can see this visually just by looking at his location heat maps via true media here. His fastball and slider both live away from the right-handed hitter. There's nothing inside apart from a changeup that he didn't really throw that much. Game planning from a hitter standpoint here as a right-handed hitter against Brandon Fott has to be as simple as, he's just gonna throw everything away from me, try to wait for something arm side that misses back into the zone. Don't worry about the inner third of the plate. If he gets me on a changeup down in, I'd say so be it. This new sinker forced hitters to respect something that was hard on the inner third of the plate. And second, the sinker finally allowed him to get off throwing his four seam almost 60% of the time to right-handed hitters when he was behind in the count. He mixed in this new sinker about 20% of the time when he was behind in the count to right-handed hitters from August 1st onward, and he was about two times more likely to get a ground ball on that sinker compared to his four seam fastball. Bryce Miller is our next case, and we have a slightly different situation than Brandon fought. Miller came up on May 2nd with what Stuff Plus thought was a pretty good fastball. It gave it a 121, a strong grade, and the pitch performed pretty well. 32% swing and miss, and x woba around 267 versus righties. It's a nasty pitch, ton of carry up in the zone. It worked really well. And yet even he, after 13 starts, started throwing a sinker. And it graded out pretty well. Stuff Plus gave it a 104, above average pitch. And in his next 12 starts, this sinker generated a ground ball on nearly 70% of the balls in play. It posted an above average slug and x woba as well in terms of contact quality allowed. It was also a pretty good pitch. That sinker also made his four seam fastball even better. x woba and x slug on his four seam both fell in a small sample versus right-handed hitters after he started throwing that sinker. And again, we see that sinker serving a very distinct purpose, a similar one to Fott's. Give me something on the inner third of the plate that's hard because almost everything Bryce Miller throws is ideally on the outer third of the plate or up. And we could go to our heat maps here again to see this with Bryce Miller. His fastballs to righties are generally middle of the plate to up and away. His slider is generally down to down away. And his sweeper is primarily away. And like fought, Miller's sinker also allowed him to have something that allowed for a greater probability of a ground ball behind in the count. Miller was previously throwing his four seam fastball 80% of the time behind in count to right handed hitters. That came down to 49% as the sinker increased to 26%. And again, we can emphasize the probability of a ground ball was about two to three times higher on this new sinker compared to Bryce Miller's four seam fastball. And Gavin Stone is our last case. He also came up in May and he got pounded over three starts, a 1440 ERA for him. It was a rough going. And his four seam was just, again, not that good. His stuff plus gave it a 93 and it got killed by right-handed hitters. So after he went down and came up again in late August, we saw two new pitches this time, a cutter, but more importantly, a sinker which actually became his primary fastball versus right-handed hitters instead of the four-seam fastball. And the sinker was good, 78% ground ball rate on just under 20 balls in play. The slug against the sinker was under 300. The x woba was also under 300 versus righties as well. Again, we're looking at a small sample here, but perhaps there's some signal in this mess as opposed to pure noise. And if you can believe it, Stone Sinker was there again to be pounded on the inner third of the play to right-handed hitters. The distinction we have with Stone is just that by adding the sinker, it didn't actually make his four seam 
any better, which is slightly surprising to me because I like the fact that he kind of got away from throwing it kind of down away, away, and started pushing it slightly more up and away to right-handed hitters. It just didn't really work out. And I think this was maybe more a byproduct of him missing arm side with the pitch back into the zone. So maybe not foolproof in adding the sinker to help the four-seam fastball. But again, I do think the point to emphasize here is that the sinker allowed him to have something behind in the count that would put a ball on the ground as opposed to having to lean on his four-seam fastball. And once again, from our what is the right-handed hitter thinking against this particular pitcher situation, the sinker gave him something to work up and into right-handed hitters, a bit more unique than fought in Miller's sinkers. And this was likely because Stone's changeup is his best pitch. And this is a pitch that he generally has down and in. So he has the confidence also to throw that pitch about 20% of the time to righties. So instead of just serving the purpose of his sinker being a down in pitch or something hard going in, I do think Stone sinker was more of a pitch that was up in in or perhaps more purely inside to right-handed hitters. So what do we just learn? I think one of the key takeaways is something I emphasized a couple times visually already. Having something on the inner third of the plate to right-handed hitters as a right-handed pitcher opens up a portion of the zone that you probably haven't touched otherwise, especially if you're a four-seam ride guy up in a slider away. You're simply putting another thought in that hitter's head. There's also another more nuanced point, which we hit on a couple times. It's that it gives you something to survive behind in the count. We saw this with Brandon Fott and Gavin Stone, both guys who come up with below average four-seam fastballs for the most part, who want to throw them behind in the count because they kind of have nothing else that they're confident in throwing for a strike. And those pitches get obliterated. With Bryce Miller, it's a slightly different situation. He's a forcing fastball guy that actually has good shape on his pitch. And yet after 12 or 13 starts, he adds a sinker. It opens up the inner third of the plate. And now his fastball is better kind of up and away. And it also gives him more diversity when he's behind in the count. And that behind in the count point is really important because I think the marginal advantage of getting a whiff when you're behind in the count, say in a 2-0 count, getting to 2-1 off a whiff is slightly less than say if you're 1-2 and you have the chance to put the hitter away for a strikeout. So that gap between say ball and play and swing and miss, I think shrinks when you're behind the count, which makes me more interested in throwing some kind of pitch that perhaps doesn't induce a swing and miss, but rather maybe gives me the chance of putting a ball on the ground where there's a very low probability of slug for the most part. And we could also back this up with data too. We'll start with a pretty macro look here. The league performance against four seam and sinker was pretty even last year. On the whole, four seam and sinker produce pretty similar results, but four seams are gonna get more whiffs, which is something that's not necessarily accounted for in here. Both are worse than the league average against all pitch types because fastballs are generally worse pitches to throw. They create the most damage, but they're necessary for the most part as starters because they're likely in zone more than your slider. Right-handed pitchers versus right-handed hitters. Specifically, we see somewhat similar of a story, basically the same performance for each pitch, even if the four seam, again, is more likely, of course, to generate a swing and miss. But when you're behind in the count, right, right here, right? So we're looking at 1-0, 2-0, 2-1 counts. Sinkers actually are gonna perform better. I think this is because sinkers are more likely to be put on the ground, which limits how bad the potential damage could be. And perhaps it also has to do with location on a very high level behind the count, right, right sinkers are more likely to be inside, whereas four seam fastballs are more likely to be up in the zone, which has some influence on batted ball outcomes. We've also seen that hitters swing slightly harder when behind in the count, thanks to new stat cast data that will likely trickle out this year. So take that more aggressive swing, which has a chance for a higher exit velo batted ball. And I can see how you'd prefer that aggressive swing to be against a pitch that has a better chance of not being lifted in the air in favor of a sinker. Sinkers behind in the count are particularly strong options. Now let's close this out by looking at a couple of right-handed pitchers who maybe should be throwing sinkers and we'll use the same parameters we just used with Fott, Miller, and Stone. We'll look at right-handed pitchers who don't throw sinkers, who throw forcing fastballs that are below league average and really live more so on that outer third of the plate. And we get two interesting names that pop up. The first is Tanner Bybee, who put together an amazing season, but projections aren't too fond of him heading into 2024, primarily because he's not striking out a ton of guys and he's suppressed home runs a lot last year, two things that something like a fielder independent pitching or FIP really weights heavily. When looking at his heat maps versus right-handed hitters, we see a similar approach where his concentration is towards the outer third of the play. But the difference with Bybee is that he has a changeup he uses about 10% of the time to right-handed hitters. And maybe this helps what Stone, Miller, and Fought had trouble doing, which was putting anything inside to righties. But Bybee still isn't really throwing anything hard and inside, as we saw Gavin Stone made that slight change to have his two-seam fastball ride up and in, while his changeup stayed down and in. The main thing that I think a sinker could really help Bybee with is that its four-seam results behind the count aren't that great. The damage against it really jumps up into the 500-plus x woba range, 
and his usage hovers around that same 50%, where it's the most likely offering you're going to see as a right-handed hitter behind the count. So perhaps there's some room for sinker here, even if it's like 10 to 15% of the time behind the count to right-handed hitters. I think it would maybe help that forcing live up and away, as we saw with Bryce Miller. But I do get the hesitation on Bobby because of the fact that he does have the changeup. I'll just point out again that in Gavin Stone's case, that didn't really prevent them from adding the sinker. They just pushed that sinker to be more up and in as opposed to how we saw Bre uh, Bryce Miller and Brandon Fott have the pitch more down and in. So maybe that's more the nuance in giving Tanner Bobby a sinker is that we understand he uses the changeup 10% of the time to right-handed hitters, but we do think behind in the count, he doesn't go to that changeup. So what if we go sinker here and push that more up and in versus righties, increase the probability, some kind of ground ball to help protect the four seam behind in the count. And our next name is Ryanzi Contreras, who threw under 60 innings last year, but it's probably more of an extreme case of what we talked about with Bott, Miller, and Stone. Contreras basically throws two pitches to righties, a fastball that sits up and away and slider that sits down and away. He has a hard changeup that he throws 2% of the time, kind of irrelevant, and a curveball that he uses as a secondary pitch out when he's ahead in the count specifically, does not throw it a lot behind in the count. And again, behind in the count, he's throwing his forcing fastball 60% of the time, from the peripherals, he got pretty darn lucky with it last year and still posted like a 6.59 ERA overall. So to me, that doesn't really bode well for sustained performance against righties in 2024 without some kind of adjustment. Given that he doesn't have a pitch that creates ground balls at a greater than 50% clip, this feels like kind of a layup to me to make him even better versus right-handed hitters and put more ball balls in play on the ground and potentially help out his four seam and give him something that works behind in the count. Now, again, I get that righties don't really seem to be the massive issue for him, but to me, it's a low hanging fruit project to kind of push against any regression in 2024. So that's all I got in this video. I understand the forcing craze makes a lot of sense, but I do think we've hit the bottoming out point with sinkers in Major League Baseball over the last couple of years. They've decreased steadily since 2009, but each of the last three seasons, they've kind of stagnated. I wouldn't be totally shocked if we see a slight increase as hitters get better versus average four seam and even good four seam, I think a lot of pitchers coming up with average four seam fastballs are going to need something that allows them to survive behind the count specifically and also open up a different quadrant and zone of the plate versus right-handed hitters. Hope you enjoyed this video. Any thoughts as always, I'll be in the comments. Thanks for watching.